This is going to be a review on 18 headphones. Uh, On-ear headphones, around-ear headphones, no over-ear headphones. If it's not fully around the ear, then it's on-ear by default. So that's what we have. I'm going to start off with uh, two Teslas, the uh, Biodynamic T51P and the Biodynamic DT1350. And with the DT1350, whose uh, default pads come with it are really just no good. They, uh, they're stiff, they sit too high off the ear, you lose bass response, just not really good at all. So I put the T51P pads, same as these right here, onto the DT1350 and it's really, really good. So um, I recommend the DT1350 and not the T51P and that is partly because of that sound and the pads and also because the DT1350 cable is twice as thick as this uh, T51P cable. The T51P cable is so thin that uh, mine broke and um, well, I had to send it back for repair and uh, they were used gently, not abused and I uh, just don't think that that's a, uh, that's a good choice. T51P and um, there are other problems with the sound on that too. Huge peak at 5 kilohertz. So let's see what else we got here. Here's a Marshall. This is cheap, about $100. Those other two were $300 each. But uh, Marshall Major is $100. Got it at the Apple Store. Uh, physical quality is actually pretty good. It's plastic, metal headband, of course. Um, pretty well made. Uh, very nice uh, leather headband, padded, and uh, of course this required a fairly extreme EQ because the highs are very, very rolled off. So, um, you know, for sound, uh, if you're not equalizing this thing else, this can be a lo-fi headphone. But uh, it's $100, very well made. If you have an equalizer, um, might be really, really good. When, once equalized, I, actually, it sounds very good. It's a, it takes the dynamics okay, it doesn't break up, so it's a, it's a well made headphone. The um, BNOH2 here is an on ear, and the problem with this is I guess it doesn't have a real metal headband in there because when you wear it for a long time, for a few hours a day, it tends to stretch out to be about like what your head is, and then the next time you put it on, it's a uh, it doesn't seal really well, it doesn't have any pressure, and it kind of loses base. And uh, so for that, I just can't recommend this being OH2. $200, um, just not a real good deal. B&OH2, uh, what do we have here? Oh, we have the BMW P5 Series 2. This also has a very thin cable, but it comes with two cables, and it is detachable when you take the ear cup off. Just pull this little guy off. Um, if I can do that here, yeah. And then you can pull the cable right out of there, and you're good to go. So, um, it just pops right back on. So, nicely made. Uh, one of the great things about the P5 is that uh, it's very slim. See, when you wear this on your head, it uh, has a pretty slim look to it, and uh, it doesn't, you know, project out like uh, you're wearing some of those uh, astronaut gear or whatever. Uh, pretty good little headphone has a uh, fair sound, not great. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not as hi-fi as you would expect for three hundred dollars. Uh, it sound is about like a two hundred dollar headphone, but you know the extra hundred dollars for the bling and a nice build and all that—that's what you're paying for. BMW P5 Series 2. Here's another uh, on ear. Here is, I don't know if I really need to take this out of the case. I haven't done the text review on this yet, just a video review. This is the uh, Grado E Grado. It's behind the ear. In other words, uh, you put this on your head and then the, this, going, this uh, band here goes behind your head. Uh, I found it very comfortable, worked right away. Sound isn't bad actually. It's, uh, it's uh, kind of like Grado sound. So you get a high fidelity uh, upper end. Uh, a little bit uneven compared to the better Grados, but uh, not bad. Uh, bass is a little bit light. 
Uh, one thing about the Egredo, though, is unlike uh, these other headphones, is if you uh, drive it with some of these uh, really, well, I wouldn't even call them bass tracks. On most heavy bass tracks, it holds up pretty well, but there's a couple of electronic tracks that I have that have really unusual, not even musical tones in them. They're just extreme bass things that uh, the drivers actually break up on that. But uh, the other headphones don't, but again, you know, with the Egredo, it's probably not, uh, not important anyway. See what we have in here in my great old carry case that I bought separately from England. I have get out of here. Ah, the SR325. Now there are a few people in this world who think. By the way, here's a little adapter cable that, uh, in case you have a uh, some kind of case around your iPhone or whatever, and you can't get the uh, the fairly large. Uh, plug in right here into the hole on the uh, on the cover for your phone then they make these things right here this is not great oh this is uh, some other brand what's uh, monster actually pretty nice uh, anyway very heavy cable not the sort of thing that really is an ideal portable oddly enough it comes with a little mini plug on here and then uh, I think they include a quarter inch adapter in the case in the box uh, it's uh, got the handmade uh, aesthetic from Grado. Uh, pretty good, good range of fit here with these. Uh, um, forget what they call these things. These stems are called uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, they had a porous metal type cup here for uh, acoustics, and uh, don't know much about them other than that. Except they sound really good. This is another headphone uh, that you can take out of the box and. Uh, if you like a hi-fi response, you can use this just straight away without going to an equalizer at all. Although some people may, if they're looking for a heavier bass, and they don't like that flat neutral bass, then they may boost the bass a little bit on the very low end. But you only want to boost the really low bass up or bass really good. So anyway, that's the SR325E. That's the new E series. Uh, I think they come in uh, this color right here and also black. And uh, these pads I find very comfortable. I've got some stuff here that uh, clamps five times as hard and uh, doesn't have any padding at all. So people that don't like on ears, I guess some of them will object to these, but I find them just very, very nice. So that's the SR325E, and that's an on ear. Next we have another BNW, BNW P7. And here's a really good headphone. Folds up a little bit, has a nice carry case comes with it uh, very well made quite a bit different than the uh, p5 this is a uh, um, bully around here uh, at least for me and uh, real deep soft pads uh, you'll feel very isolated with this and um, sound is really good out of the box uh, hi-fi sound pretty strong bass uh, strong treble uh, might be a little uneven on the high end, but um, pretty good overall sound. One of the best things that you can take out of a box and use as is. Although I tend to think the Grado 325 is a lot better than this, but uh, you know, if you want the darker sound uh, with a richer bass and everything else, this may uh, be better. And of course, this is uh, this is uh, closed and very good isolation. And the uh, 325 course is open; doesn't isolate at all. Now going back here. We have the Bose QC25. This is a new QC25, and it has uh, that amazing noise canceling that uh, Bose is famous for. This is uh, it's got it. This this one actually will play with the noise canceling turned off, so you can uh, turn it on, turn it off. It'll play with it off, but it sounds different with it off. With it on. The, the sound is actually almost what I would call perfectly hi-fi flat. It, um, it uh, doesn't sound that good with the noise canceling off. The highs are rolled off more. The mid-range is more uneven. But it does work and probably would be good enough for use on uh, airplane flights if you uh, the battery quits and you don't have backup battery. It uses a standard battery, not a rechargeable. And uh, the noise canceling is phenomenal. One thing about the noise canceling on the uh, QC25 is 
there's a soft hiss in the background. You probably won't notice it playing music, even at home where it's quiet. But um, in, if you're listening to music with very quiet passages, like some of the classical music, uh, you may notice that hiss, because it's definitely there. But it's a, a very soft, high-pitched, well, not so high-pitched. It's, it's just a very soft white noise that uh, is barely noticeable. So uh, uh, I find it adequate for almost everything I uh, play at home on a home system and uh, the pads are extremely comfortable the build quality just looks really really nice uh, it's a very nice looking headphone so there's the QC25 now let's look at this this is the final audio Pandora 4 I had a Pandora 6 uh, sold that to somebody Pandora 4 to me, it was a failure. It uh, has the same components as the six. It has that uh, uh, what do we call a um, balanced armature in here, like one of those IEMs, and uh, you can almost see it in here. It uh, sticks up like one of those IEM drivers. Anyway, it has that plus a conventional driver, and uh, can we see that here? Yeah. Okay. Pull that ear pad off, and I think we can see that. Uh, little balanced armature down here but anyway uh, they say that if you get the the pads that are made for the six then this would sound like a six without those pads it sounds very choppy on a high end and overly bright especially at some frequencies way too bright uh, but the pads are very expensive I think 60 to 80 dollars and so I couldn't recommend that to anybody I just said you know like forget it um, Pandora 4 uh, now where's the let's go right to this little guy right here this is probably the most unusual headphone I've ever had uh, like another headphone I had one time a Biodynamic DT48 this is similar to that it's very heavy uh, it doesn't look that big but it's very heavy it has a metal headband and has these uh, aluminum or solid aluminum cups with heavy magnets in them. It's, it's pretty heavy. And uh, the clamping force on here is just unbelievable. It's about, well, pick any headphone here, even the tightest fitting headphone, this thing is several times the clamping force. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And in addition to having that super strong clamping force, there's um, the padding is almost non-existent here. So your ears go right in here and press up against these pads and drivers uh, which is just uh, unbelievable and then to add to all that the sound has a very steep roll off in the highs and this is some kind of special technology that they're talking about that uh, that uh, produces some kind of superior acoustic properties but with that uh, roll off in the highs I don't know uh, how they're ever going to get this over on any kind of audiophile community. Here's another uh, headphone that required a rather extreme equalization, which is this uh, Sennheiser HDA, HD Alpha 280. Uh, this, though, is an audiometric headphone, and so the extreme EQ on this is, of course, understandable if you're trying to boost it up to hi-fi standards. Unfortunately, that extreme EQ on this headphone, uh, while it produces a hi-fi sound, it's a very grainy and uh, probably because of a lot of unevenness between all those adjusted frequencies and everything. So uh, uh, it's possible to use this for hi-fi, but it's uh, uh, really very grainy and uh, really made to be an audiometric headphone. This requires just as extreme of an EQ as this HDA280, this uh, um, Flare Audio R1. But the end result of that EQ on the R1 was a sound that's actually as good as or better than anything I got on this table, which is just adds to the unusual nature of this headphone. It's just absolutely phenomenal that you could have something made like this that would take an extreme EQ and still sound that good. And it may have to do with the design that they did that, uh, you know, was... Um, had those special acoustic properties, I don't know, uh, whatever it is, 
it's pretty fantastic, but it takes a special amount of patience to actually tolerate something like this. I, I can't imagine... I can't imagine anybody buying this and hanging on to it. It's just uh, just absolutely unbelievable. Anyway, that's the Flare Audio R1. That's the Sennheiser HDA280. Here's something I got recently from Mastrop. Uh, Philips SHP uh, 9500. And this is pretty amazing because the 9500 it has these soft cloth ear pads that are uh, very, very padded, nice and soft and squishy. Fits around the ear very nicely. Has a really good range of adjustment. The outer parts of this just seem like extremely high quality. It reminds me of the AKG um, K, AKG K812. That's a K812. Now it's a $1,500 headphone, and I swear this thing is built just as well. And I think it has 50 millimeter drivers. This thing is fantastic. Of course, that's physically. Sonically, it uh, it's a bit uneven. Uh, it benefits from some equalization, especially on the bass end. But still, uh, $60 and uh, built like just an amazing, built like a, I don't know, five or $500,000 headphone. Just amazing build and, uh, and a really terrific fit. SHP 9500 Phillips. Uh, here's something that's not so great. It's a DJ headphone, Sennheiser HD8 DJ, HD8 DJ. Big long coil cord here. Pretty tight fit around the ears. Not the most comfortable thing. I can get used to it pretty easy. Uh, made for DJs. And uh, has a kind of a peculiar fit. You either push the headband way forward on the head or way back. Uh, but it has a very uh, has a very rolled off treble, and uh, I have headphones on the table here. I have a very emphasized treble, so it ain't me. It's this. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's good for DJs. I don't know. But anyway, for three hundred ninety dollars, I don't know. I think they could do a lot better than that. Here's the new AKG K five fifty three. Got this off a of master up for one hundred twenty dollars. Has a nice fit, goes around the ear, very comfortable. Uh, sound is kind of like that Philips in a way, a little bit uneven on the high end, but a good high end and uh, very uh, hi fi and uh, a little weak on the low bass. So, a little bass boost on here, it does wonders, makes it sound pretty good for the price. I think it's a pretty good deal. The uh, AKG K553. Pretty decent headphone. Here we have a uh, V mode. I gave away my V mode M100, the last one I had. That's number four. This is the uh, LP2. Got this on a special deal for I don't know, it's 100 and something. And I put the uh, V mode uh, Boom Pro mic on it to use for Skype calls, which works very well. This, uh, like I guess the other DJ headphone, is kind of rolled off in the highs and a uh, uh, pretty strong bass. I did a pretty substantial EQ on this to bring it up to hi-fi standards. The good news there is, is it doesn't get grainy, choppy, or anything. It uh, EQs up very nice, has a really nice sound. The uh, Biodynamic Custom One Pro, I call it COP, Custom One Pro. And it's... Uh, Pretty uneven response, but uh, I've always said it's usable out of the box without EQ if you want. Uh, but you know, uh, you'd benefit from getting some kind of equalizer or one of those uh, um, audio, uh, uh, you know, pre made uh, curves for it. Uh, there's a, uh, an application for iPhones, things like that, Acutio, I think it's called, that'll give you a curve for this. It'll fix it up pretty nice. On an iPhone, uh, or iPod, I used uh, a setting, an EQ setting it's built in called, I think it was called Piano, and uh, it did something really nice for this. It uh, it trimmed down that peak around 9 kilohertz pretty good and improved the mid-range, and actually uh, that may be all a person would need to do to get really, really great sound out of this thing. It has the bass ports, which I always set on number 3, and uh, looks like the headband's coming apart a little bit, but it's not really. It's a, it's a Velcro thing. But it uh, cost $150 from Mass Drop. A heck of a deal. Uh, pretty
pretty good headphone. That should be pretty reliable too. Last a long, long time. Here's the Biodynamic uh, T90 Tesla. Seven hundred dollars. This is the anniversary edition. The uh, let's see, Tesla uh, T90. Yeah, forget what the name of that special edition was. Anyway, has these uh, cloth ear pads. If you change ear pads, it sounds different. The uh, you get uh, you can get leatherette ear pads or whatever for these things. This has very strong peaks and highs. I EQ'd those peaks down. It sounds really good. It sounds uh, EQ'd. It sounds as good as anything on the table. And certainly as good as that uh, that uh, Iron Maiden headphone I have over there. But um, it doesn't sound as good as a T1. Now the T1 is peaky and has some really uh, strange things going on in a high treble, but uh, if you EQ this and EQ a T1, so they both sound flat with, uh, uh, you know, test tones and so on, so they both sound the same, then you'll be able to tell that the T1's a better headphone. It has a, a, it sounds better. You just play something for five minutes on it and then switch to this, you'll tell the difference immediately. Uh, but still, this is pretty good. I don't know if it's $700 worth of headphone, but uh, anyway... Nice little collector's piece. Uh, Jubilee, that's what it was. The Jubilee edition. So anyway, out of all these headphones, what do I really, really like? What I like the best is I like the Grado SR325E. Can't. I had an old SR325. Can't say that it's really any better. Or I guess it is. It's improved. They have better materials now, better drivers. Uh, but anyway, that's a big favorite of mine. Another big favorite of mine for everyday use is that Biodynamic DT1350 with the T51P ear pads on it. That's a real big favorite of mine. Uh, it's more portable than the um, Grado because it's closed. Uh, the Bose, um, Bose, uh, you know, if this is the only headphone I ever had, the uh, uh, QC25, I wouldn't mind has a really terrific, uh, fairly neutral sound to it. Um, just uh, pretty amazing. Quality is great and everything. Uh, no complaints at all. And uh, it's a very rare track that I would uh, mind that hiss. Um, I think it's actually a pretty good deal for $300. Uh, considering what a lot of these cost, uh, I think it's really a good deal for $300. So that's a big favorite. Uh, what else do we have here that I think is just going to be one of my all-time favorites here? I suppose the Philips possibly could be, but I think that's an open headphone also, so that wouldn't be real high on my list. I guess this is, I'm going to have to say, this is one of my favorites in spite of a, just an absolutely ridiculous clamping force and uh, discomfort here. I can put this on my head and I actually uh, can get used to it, but then again, I've been used to Iron Maiden headphones for years so you know nobody else can be able to tolerate this thing it's just uh, unbelievable but the sound with my extreme EQ on it and everything else is actually pretty good it has a kind of a tonal quality to it that's uh, just incredibly musical and uh, so who knows um, that's pretty much my review of these 18 headphones hope you enjoyed it thank you